and welcome to Amethyst Star Crafting. My name is Jane Ormark and I'm a UK independent stamping up demonstrator. And today we are looking at um, another brand new stamp set which is um, going to be available to customers from the 4th of September. Um, so a little while yet. Um, however, as I've said before, as a demonstrator, we get to pre-order and so we can have a look at the stamps, play around with them a bit um, before we, uh, um, we we can sell them to you guys. So um, this stamp set is called Nature's Beauty. Now, the fantastic thing about this particular set is that um, we support as a company stamping up um, a lot of charities. And this particular stamp is going to be for mental health charities across the world. So whichever country you're in, there will be a local mental health charity um, that £2.50 from every single sale of any, uh, you know, each one of this stamp set, £2.50, which I think is quite a lot, is going to go to mental health charity. So not only is it the most beautiful stamp set that you will see, it's also, um, if you buy it, it's going to go to a really good cause, um, £2.50 of it from every sale. So um, I think that that's absolutely amazing. So it's called Nature's Beauty. It has the most beautiful little line drawings of a deer, little bunny rabbit and a fox. There's some tree images, there's some leaves, um, you know, sort of a springy leaf thing, a little bit of grass, a little bit of other sort of foliage or scrub and snowflakes if you wanted to make it for the winter time. So um, I thought that I would um, get this one out and have a go and play with it and see what I could do as a first one. So I've got out the Stamparatus. Um, as you know, I love using the Stamparatus and I've um, got my um, wreath template. Um, this is the one that I've made. If you look back in previous videos or just put in wreath tape, template and my name you'll find it um i'll try and put the link down below but if i don't then then i don't i've chosen two colors which is old olive and mossy meadow because they sort of go well together and i've just done two consecutive circles and i'm just about to finish off the other one i've done one row in the old olive moved the ink pad slightly so it comes in between and done the other one in the um old olive as opposed to the mossy meadow so let me get my old olive out and we shall just finish off these couples so if you haven't seen this before you can actually see what i'm doing so we need to move this just round to the next section this is a five by five you can make your template whatever size you want that one in there and I'm doing it twice. The nice thing about the Stamparators is that you can make the colours a little bit darker if you want to, which is what I wanted to do. And then we're just going to move it along to the next thing. As I say, it's, um, it's something which when it first came out was quite sort of new and exciting. Now it's, um, I think most people know about the wreath template. Um, and as I say, if you don't, you can find it. Um, but it's something that I do use quite a lot, particularly at Christmas time. I think it's quite nice to have, um, you know, circular things around our cards. Um, and this leaf, I think, is absolutely perfect because it makes such a beautiful... Um, sort of foliage coming in. And I've left a little bit of a space on there. But as I say, you could do one. You can see that, obviously, depending how far you come in, depends how um, tight the circle is going to be. So the outside one is sort of um, um, quite a nice sort of wavy type pattern. Um, simply chamois, great thing for cleaning it up. Not sure whether you can quite see this on camera because I'm probably right at the end of it. But um, that then gives us what we need on here. So I am going to finish this actually using the Stamparators because I might be able to get um, a quite nice 
deeper colour. Let's put this magnet out of the way. I never like to have two magnets out at the same time. I haven't yet, and I always have to touch wood when I'm saying it, I haven't yet um, broken one of my magnets. So, uh, um, so that's quite good, but I am quite careful. Um, I'm also using, and again, this is something which is in the annual catalogue, um, it's a foam mat with the grid markings on. You know that obviously you've got the uh, grid markings on the base, but there is a foam mat now which goes in and you have the grid markings on there as well, which I think is great. So we're just going to line this up in the corner like this. Just put my magnet in on there so it'll hold it down. And then um, what are we going to choose? I could put anything in the centre, couldn't I? Um, ooh, I think I'm going to use, choose the deer. I absolutely love this deer. So we are going to ch choose the deer and I just want him to go right in the centre like that. So let's um, line him up so he's in the centre. And then pick him up. And I am going to put him in soft suede because I think a nice sort of soft suede deer will be um, will be quite nice. So let's ink him up. And as I say, I can make him as dark as I want. So there we go. I'm going to do him just one more time because I do want him to come quite dark. There we go. See how beautiful that is. I just love that image. I think it is just so, I, as you know, um, lined image drawings I think are beautiful because I'm not an artist. I'd love to be able to draw like this. I really would. And one of the things that got me into Stampy Up in the first place was the lined image drawings because it meant that I was able to make cards and projects and things and, um, and I looked like an artist. Now, are we going to have something just sort of tucked at the back then maybe maybe let me have a little look and see um it's going to go that way isn't it so is that going to tuck off too much no i think that that might work we'll just try that just there to just give a little bit of interest running through so oof, golly that was a bit um one of the nice things about the stamperators is that you can look straighten things up afterwards right we need that to go out a bit further so it is um, it is such a great tool because you don't ever get anything upside down or inside out. You can take it out and you can turn around and go, actually, that's still not completely straight. So I can just ease it and get it where I want it. And that's going to come there. Yes, and not go over the body. Um, oh, now, do I do this in... Um, the same colours or slightly... I think I'm just going to do it in smoky slate, actually. Um, might seem odd, but I want it to sort of be just sort of slightly in the background. And it is sort of scrubby looking. Um, so sort of scrubland rather than the actual tree, I think. So I'm just going to put it there and see. Yes, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect because we're going to do a tiny little bit of watercolouring on there. And then I think that that will stand as it is. So... Just clean that off, pop it back in its case, and then that's all we need for the stamperators for the moment. Um, but as I say, oh, I just, I love this deer, I really do. I think I will be using it again and again and again. Okay, let's take this out of here then, because we don't want the stamperators anymore. Uh, we could do the whole loss on there, but... It's easier, I think, to actually see, to put it on there. That, I think, is quite pretty. Right, um, so we just need to sort of add a little bit um, on the bottom of here. So I'm going to take um, the smoky slate and I'm going to just take a little bit onto the block like that because I don't want a huge amount on there and I think I'm going to use my wink of Stella for this um, you can use your aqua painter you can use your blender pen um, you can also use wink of Stella so why not let's um, just pick some of this up with the wink of Stella to make sure that I've got some colour on 
here, make sure it's not too dark. No, that should be fine. And then I'm just going to run this over where the ground is and just bring it into the edge of those leaves. Be quite careful in between where the, because it's water-based and obviously our ink's water-based, so you have to be a little bit cautious. But it shouldn't be too bad, just pick up a little bit more. It's not too dark, and then I'm just going to bring some down on here as well. Bring that into the back like that, and I think that that looks that looks fine on there. Okay, let's just clean that off because we don't want grey next time we pick up the wink of Stella. Now, I think I also want just a little bit of colour along that background as well. Um, I want just a tiny, tiny, tiniest amount. So um, I don't want it too dark. So let's use, that's where I love that we have so many different tools. I'm going to use our watercolour pencils because I just want a little bit of um, sky in here. Now I've got both the sets. So we have various different shades of blue so let's have a look I've got we've got four different shades of blue here so um, I need to see which one always good idea to have some scratch paper now that's quite vibrant that's Pacific Point that also is quite that's balmy blue that's that might be better that's night of navy which I think is going to be too dark And that is, oh, actually, that might be quite nice. That's pool party, which is quite pale. As I say, I just want something. And this is where you use the side of your, side of your pen, pen, pencil. And then just come round. The outside of the deer. You can get it quite nice and soft if you use the side of your pencil. To go inside. Now, obviously, you can mask this. I've gone very quiet because I'm colouring. You can mask this, um, and obviously, if you masked it, it would. Um, you'd be able to sort of go over it a bit better but I think I think we can get away with it so I'm just going to take it round on here okay now we're going to have to see but I think if I get my aqua painter and I don't want it to that should be fine so I'm literally just going to take this and just going around the edge. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of a halo around there. And it's quite, my aqua painter is fairly dry because I don't want it to be too bright or too wet. So there's a chance of it bleeding through. I'm literally just taking it off on the sides and as I say I could have done a mask but this is thinking after you've actually stamped which we quite often do and as I say as long as you're fairly careful you should be able to just take it in because again because it's um it's water-based you're only just giving sort of a hint in the background there like that so that just gives it a little bit of color and I think that works I think that works I quite like the pool party against the uh, um, the sky like that so you've then got your image and then I would mount it on something I've no idea what because I haven't sort of really planned that 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 far um, let's have a look and see if I've got anything which is um, 
which is about at the moment. Um, I'd probably mount it on something green, um, which I will do at the end, but I haven't sort of thought. So I would probably choose one. Let me have a look and see what sort of scraps I've got. Um, I would either choose the mossy meadow or the old olive. That's old olive. It's the wrong size, but mount that on old olive would look quite nice. Um, and put a sentiment in the front and as I say I will probably finish it and put it off on the front um, to just give you sort of the finished idea um, but that would look quite nice you could make it very Christmassy and just put it in with um, this is um, cherry cobbler so that would look quite nice in cherry cobbler on the back um, lots of different ideas as I say I'm not going to show you that now it was literally coming on to show you how beautiful um, this stamp set is and what you can actually do just a very simple one layer card um, and and using that beautiful deer so thank you so much for watching me do look forward to seeing you again bye bye